UNP parliamentarian Dr. Harshit De Silva provided an extensive explanation about the forensic audit report on the bond scam at a media briefing held at the opposition leader's office today. This forensic audit report was done by two top audit firms in the world. There are two basic audits in this. One is the transaction that occurred in the bond market. The other one is the transaction that took place in the stock market. All the phone call recordings, text messages, Viber messages, WhatsApp messages, all the money that was looted by hundreds, three hundreds, five hundreds and seven hundreds, all of these information are in the report. There are worse phone recordings than Anjan Ramanayaka's ones. The files that were deleted have been reopened. Can you remember, we addressed the person as Fat Man in the Presidential Commission of Inquiry. Fat Man has 15,955 active documents. There are 354,672 deleted documents. In addition to all of these findings, they have held discussions with people. There are interviews. There is something missing in this. They were not only able to talk to Arjuna Mahindran, but they have all of his digital assets. They are in possession of his phone, iPad, desktop and laptop. So they were able to find these under digital forensics. The second matter is about the former governor of the central bank, Ajit Nivad Cabral. He is there, but they have not found any of his electronic devices. Dr. Harsha De Silva also explained about the loss that was incurred by the bond scam. As of 27 February 2015, the minimum loss was 1.106 billion rupees. The maximum loss was at 1.114 billion rupees. They have looked into all suspicious issuances of bonds till the 29th of March. According to that, a loss of 38.9 million has been incurred from the first one, 91.8 million from the second, 675 million from the third. 611 million from the fourth and 1.495 billion from the fifth. The above was the loss the government incurred. What was criticized was that there was no theft from 2015 to 2016. But the minimum loss incurred by the government from the 27th February 2015 to 29th March 2016 is at 6.633 billion rupees. The maximum loss is at 9.681 billion rupees. These numbers were released to the general public for the first time through this forensic audit report. All the indirect connections through various investigations we saw on media are not mentioned in this. That is a different story. The CID should be investigating as to what happened to the money. Meanwhile, MP Mujibur Rahman expressed his views about the bond scam at a press briefing held at the city quarter. Who will be held responsible for the losses of 10.47 billion suffered through the issuance of bonds and the losses caused to the EPF that amounted to 10 billion rupees? How are they planning on getting this money back? Who will be held responsible for this? Some people are saying now that this is not a theft and it is a loss. So they are trying to say that what happened in 2015 was a theft and what happened before that was not a theft. They are saying that they suffered losses after engaging in business. We know that people suffer losses while doing business. They might suffer losses in the first year and the second year. But they cannot be recording losses continuously. If they are suffering losses continuously, then the person who is doing it does not know how to carry out a business. Or they are trying to depict there are transactions that cause losses while they had amassed undue profits through these transactions. We would like to point out that the loss suffered between 2005 and 2015 was a theft. They are trying to label it as a loss and cover up that theft. MP Namal Rajapaksa participated in the Badula District Balamandala meeting last afternoon. Journalists questioned the minister about the bond scam investigations. <laughs> We will definitely conduct a clear investigation about the bond scam. We will arrest whoever is involved in this scam, no matter where they are hiding in the world. And we will let police enforce the law independently for perpetrators.